This is the Logitech G502 Hero Mouse. It originally came out in 2014, then they released an updated version in 2018, which is the one I've been using for about a month now. But even though this is an older mouse, I'm still going to be giving a review about it, as well as showing you the steps to take to unlocking its most amazing feature for video editors. That would be the Logitech G Hub software and the programmable buttons on this sick mouse. I'll show you the power of mapping macros to these programmable buttons and just how much more efficient it is to use these macros combined with the keyboard shortcut in an editing software. I'll be using DaVinci Resolve. Also, side note, even though I'm using DaVinci Resolve as my main editing software, this system can be applied to any editing software with assignable keyboard shortcuts. Let's get into it. I've been a video editor for about four years now, and for a year and a half-ish, I used a trackpad for editing my videos. Honestly, I didn't even know what I was missing out on with a mouse, so I never really moved on to it. The videos I was putting out there were not that great, to be honest, but that's when I decided to upgrade from iMovie to DaVinci Resolve, and that completely changed everything. That's when I started using a mouse, as well as upgrade from my 15-year-old MacBook Pro that I was editing on that was just uh, to a 2020 M1 Mac Mini. It was about another year of grinding in DaVinci Resolve that I finally got the hang of using a mouse. It was great, but then again, I didn't really know what I was missing out on. That was until my video editing client decided to give me this mouse. This is a Logitech G502 Hero mouse, and it works like a breeze in an editing software. It was one of the best investments that I never had to make, and I've really had very little complaints about it. The mouse itself is a great shape and form for my hands, which I would consider to be quite average in length. The actual material of the mouse is a durable plastic, and the weight actually seemed a little bit lighter than I expected, but that's okay because there are actually weights that you can distribute along the bottom of the mouse to give it that perfect feel that you're looking for. Obviously, this mouse was designed for gaming, so there is a button that you can press to let the wheel fly freely, which at first I didn't really like. I found the texture of the button to be a little clacky for me, but I've actually grown to like it. Additionally, there's a programmable button on top of the mouse that allows you to adjust different DPIs, which with me not being a gamer, I eventually figured out to be different sensitivities. Personally, if you're wondering, I keep my mouse at around 2550 DPI, which is perfect for me to stream YouTube, edit videos, videos or create thumbnails, which honestly over the summer is pretty much all I've been doing on my computer. Aside from all the internal features, the exterior has 11 programmable buttons built for whatever you need to program them to. You can even select different desktops inside the Logitech G Hub software, which means that you can have one button that's mapped to one specific feature in Safari, say for example, and then I can have the same button mapped to a different preset in my editing software. Pretty cool, right? So now that I've gotten you all antsy on how you actually need to do this, let's jump into it and I'll show you how to do it. First, plug it in or connect it with Bluetooth. Either way, connect your Logitech mouse to your computer. Next, you'll need to go to this website and download the Logitech G Hub software for your specific OS. You might need to create an account for this. Make sure you allow your Mac or PC permissions to access the mouse and the software in the settings. Otherwise, it'll feel like you're just spinning in circles like it did for me when I tried the first time. But once you get this figured out, you'll find it a lot easier to do the next steps. Jump into the editing software of your choice and choose which features you would like to assign to your mouse. Personally, I had all my cutting settings on the left side of my keyboard, and then when I wanted to move about my timeline, I had to move my entire hand to the opposite side of my keyboard. Now, of course, for editing, this isn't ideal, but I edited like that for a while. With this mouse, I can overcome that issue very easily. First, assign the action that you want to perform in your editing software to some absurd shortcut that you'll never accidentally hit on your keyboard. Next, go into the G Hub software, go to the menu and select add a game slash application. Choose your editing software, then make a new profile with your editing software selected. I called mine DaVinci Resolve Shortcuts. Choose the button that you want to assign and click create macro. Here's where it gets important. Name this macro the action that will eventually perform. Select the type of macro that you want to create, as it says, right? right there. Since this is just a shortcut, I'll select no repeat. Press start now and make sure you're ready to press the shortcut that you assigned in your editing software to an absurd keystroke. Click record keystrokes and this will start recording the actions that you take on your keyboard. When you're done, don't worry about looking at double what you pressed. This just means it recorded your press and when you lifted your finger in one motion. After you have your macro created, you need to go into the software, click the button that you want to assign and click the macro that you just created. Now that that's done, you can then go into 
your editing software and play around with your new shortcuts. Since you just got your fancy new mouse all souped up for your editing software, now go watch this video to put those into practice. See you guys.